welcome back everybody uh, today's video is going to be about the Jeep uh, a little update two years nearly 30,000 miles on this bad boy uh, lots of trips we've been on um, a little bit about the uh, four-cylinder 2.0 turbo how it's doing uh, good or bad so stay tuned for that but real quick before we get into the video I wanted to invite you to check out the actual YouTube channel uh, overlanding allegiance and uh, Instagram Overlanding Allegiance as well. Uh, check it out. If you like it, go ahead and uh, subscribe. What can it hurt, right? A couple of videos every so often to re watch and uh, add to the list of things to see Overlanding related. Uh, without further ado though, let's head right into the video. Uh, stay tuned for all the information regarding the Jeep. Hope you enjoy the video. Guys. to the channel everybody I am out close to home at one of the places I love to go to just get away for a minute you can I can do it in an afternoon uh, three or four hours start to finish uh, but I love to come out here but what we're out here today for is to talk very quickly about where we're at with our Jeep uh, the Wrangler Rubicon Recon Edition uh, not the extreme recon I'll talk about that in the end of the video but what we do have is the four-door Wrangler um, with a recon edition we'll just call it a trim package because that's all it really is uh, some red seat belts uh, it comes with a badge on the side that says recon edition it comes with some stickers on the hood and on the sides you know it came with other things that were standard options like steel bumpers and reinforced rear tire carriers uh, it came with the Mopar uh, slider I think the one step up Mopar sliders I think uh, which have worked great it also came with um, a leather dash instead of the colored dash which I really like I didn't like it at first I kind of thought I wish I missed wanted the colored dash but the more I drive it the more I see other Jeeps it's a little bit unique it's one of the most unique things I think that the recon edition uh, gave you um, it's stitched with red stitching and uh, really kind of nice. I don't know of any other editions or, or versions that came that way. So it's it's sort of a one of a kind dash, if you will. Uh, it also came with the four cylinder 2.0 turbo engine. A lot of people that I've heard from and talked to and seen online sort of balk at that engine. And I was really unsure when we bought it. I wasn't sure it was gonna be able to do what Jeeps can do with the bigger engines, the, the now diesel engine or the six cylinder engines. But I'm here to tell you that after 30,000 miles of driving it, or darn near 30,000 miles, and two years, and lots and lots of trips, both highway miles to get to where you're going off-road, and then off-roading. So I'd say about one-third of the miles that we put on this thing are actual off-road miles, climbing hills, uh, a little bit of off-roading, going over rocks, crossing streams. You've seen the videos, hopefully. If you haven't, uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, like the videos if you will and uh, hit that bell for the next videos that come enough of the sales pitch um, but there's lots of videos of where we've been and, and what we've done with this engine and this platform um, 
it's a great engine guys uh the turbo makes up for any lack of horsepower that you might think four cylinders brings uh there's a little bit of turbo lag uh which does come into play when you're off-roading and bouldering a little bit and i've learned to use left foot braking to get that lag out and get that turbo kicked in with the rev of uh, the rpms and then slowly let the the uh break out and i can climb rocks as smooth as butter I'm still getting used to it, so it's not always smooth as butter, and there is some jerking because of my uh, still learning, but there's a way around that small problem. Reliability, I haven't had a single problem with it, nothing, not a light, not a ding, not a bell, uh, nothing. The turbo seems to be uh, high quality. I've bred up on it a little bit. I'm not gonna spew stats at you or statistics, but they went with a pretty good turbo, it appears, uh, with, because there's no problems. I haven't heard of anyone else having problems with it yet. Uh, 30,000 is not a whole lot of miles, but to me, it's enough to really say, I can tell you that it's a good engine, reliable, takes you anywhere you wanna go, just like any Jeep would, um, and worth buying if you wanna try it. Um, would I buy it again? I don't know. I, I think I'd probably maybe go with the electric assist six cylinder. I think there's one of those. I always wanted a diesel and a Wrangler, but I'm hearing things I don't like about the diesel. So meh, uh, I might just buy one of these engines again. Who knows? Um, Ford's doing something similar with a twin turbo. Uh, you know, the whole one up game, Jeep and Ford are gonna do this. This is gonna be good for us, no matter what you're driving, Jeep, Ford, whatever, because competition, breeds better product so i look forward to seeing what each company does to sort of one-up each other and make their product a better product um, all that aside it's a great fun vehicle that we've been now um overlanding in for about a year and a half it took us about four or five months to get started um but we love it and a couple of the additional things we've done to this vehicle since the last video um we had the rack, we had the tent, um, the Rhino rack platform with the um, backbone system is amazing. Low profile, uh, not very noisy, um, but will hold all the weight you could possibly put up there. Um, our uh, James Brood Evo tent is amazing, 360 views. I've done some videos on that. We added the winch, that was in the last video. I recently added some KC lights to the front. There's a video coming or maybe already out by the time I put this video on my install on the lights. Uh, I did a video on a do-it-yourself platform to mount a fridge slide for our fridge in the back, Iceco. I love my Iceco fridge. Uh, it's rugged and works. Uh, the compressor in that thing is high dollar, just like all the high dollar fridges, but it's a mid-range fridge, about 500 bucks. We're using some new totes uh, for storage. I'm still learning that process. But we are trying to get out and do as much adventuring as possible. One last thing about the whole recon addition versus the uh, extreme recon. Not an extreme recon. But what we've done to it with the 2-inch Mopar lift, the 35-inch tires, the Icon 17-inch wheels, um, it probably looks similar to the extreme recon. Uh, because it's lifted and has 35s. Uh, it is not re-geared um, as the Extreme Recon, I believe, comes re-geared with 35s and a one and a half inch lift, I believe, and maybe a couple other things. Comment below with, uh, if you've got a Recon, Extreme Recon package, um, what it came with exactly. I know there the wheels are bead ready um, in the Extreme Recon. I did not get bead locks. But basically built the Extreme Recon before Re Extreme Recon came out with a Rubicon Recon Edition. It's confusing, I know, uh, but I'm just trying to be clear here. I do not own the Extreme Recon. It's something we've built over the last two years and learned to love because it takes us wherever we want to go. Challenging, not so challenging, gets us where others can't get, which if you're in cheap you want to be able to go places that maybe some can't get to to get more secluded and that's what I love that said if you want to get out and adventure you do not have to spend seventy thousand dollars on a Jeep and you know thousands and thousands of dollars on a tent and rack system to hold the tent and a refrigerator 
you can go out. I have seen Hondas. I have seen Mitsubishi's. I have seen everything under the sun. Vans, non-conversion vans, just regular vans. Uh, get to some of the places that we've gone to. And those people are out there adventuring. And they're seeing the beauty that is our amazing country. And all I can say is when you're out in a beautiful place, whether you're alone with friends or just strangers around you, the beauty around you is worth every bit of time that it takes to get there. And I really believe that we all need to get out there and move ourselves from the hustle and the bustle of what regular life brings, the craziness that is, what's going on in the world today, and just unplug. So I'm going to start saying, let's get out there and unplug, because that is uh, the truth. We all need to do that. We all need to stop worrying and just take it in. So I hope to get out there and unplug and see you folks out there uh, someday soon. Please like, subscribe, hit that bell button for the future videos, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.